But we have the one dot one dot two hot fix. Your details regarding the first defendant hot fix applied. Maintenance free on Thursday, 9 12. Time you guys seen this, everything should be live. If there's any bug fixes or anything like that, any other miscellaneous things, take a look at their main page after this. But first, to start us off, we do have some content improvements. Regarding content, remove certain dungeon penalties that appear in the invasion. Oh yeah. Now these, I guess, would be these ones as follows. When using a general round weapon, all the way down, pretty much all the rounds, bullet cost plus one, so all those are gone. When using, when using roll, fireman attack minus 3.6 up to 10 stacks, that's gone. Grappling hook, skill power minus 43.6, that's gone. When using skill, movement speed minus 50%, that is gone. When aiming incoming damage modifier, that's gone. HP orbs appear, now recover 25% of max HP instead of 20%. So a 5% increase. MP orbs that appear in intercept battles now recover 16% instead of 13, so 3% increase. Also, they've lowered the difficulty of normal slash hard dead ride. Interesting, guys. Um, just last week, they essentially nerfed Pyro. Now they did Dead Bride. Decrease the frequency of teleport while frenzied. Increase the range of Snowstorm, the veil consisting of chill, and reduce the damage. Awesome. That's a huge one here. This is really interesting to me that they're nerfing the bosses like this. Um, I guess to kind of ease more people in so they can kind of get through the earlier ones a little more. But I think that's a recipe for a disaster because then they'll find once they get to the harder ones like Gluttony, even Frostwalker down there at the low end, it's not going to be as easy. <laughs> so I'm not sure the thought process behind that. They've also decreased the part HP of the amplifier, lowered the difficulty of normal hanged man, greatly reduced the part HP of the charge of the object inside the mount that attacks while frenzied. Greatly reduced the damage of Thunder Wave, the wave of thunder emitting from the center. Greatly reduced the damage of Charging Laser, laser fired from the mouth when you fail to destroy the Charger. Decreased the damage of the Thunderbolt skill that occurs while frenzied. Decreased the duration of the Electric Cannon, the Electric Spear. Lowered the difficulty of the Deception Transmitter Defense Mission at Sterilland Rockfall. Knockdown damage will not occur in a row when damaged by traps. Made monsters spawn faster. An extermination mission of the hard infiltration operation Echo Swamp Seed Vault and lowered the required amount for the collection mission. Okay, this one's here. This one's huge. So, monsters spawn faster in the Echo Swamp Seed Vault one. I don't have any gameplay prior to this, so we'd have to see kind of what it's looking like now. That could make this a, a much more efficient one to farm now. Data collection mission, the hard infiltration operation. Agios the old mystery has been changed to a traversal mission. The data collection has been changed to a traversal mission. Interesting. So probably no more collecting, just reaching, you know, the end zone, so to speak. In the invasion, Legion of Immortality, a maximum distance for feeding artificial brains to the quantum computing unit has been changed from 2 meters to 3.5. Added sniper monsters to the fortress defense line void fragment mission to prevent simple macros. What is this? Fortress defense line void fragment. That one's not ringing a bell. Is that the one we've you guys would use for the little weapon proficiency or whatever? That's interesting. That's kind of a nerf. <laughs> The ESC menu can now be activated during the DBNO state. Change the aim assist settings for controllers. The default value is now 50 instead of 80. Maximum aim assist range for every weapon except sniper rifles has been changed to 100 meters. This is huge. <laughs> aim assist now reactivates faster when targeting multiple enemies in a row. The minimum distance for camera auto rotate to trigger has been changed to 4 meters or above. We can pull strength of crosshair towards the center of an enemy, decrease the duration of aim assist when trying to target another monster. Now these aim assist changes here guys are huge. This may make me personally try aim assist again, but as of late, pretty much the entirety of invasion and 
maybe a couple weeks leading to it, we've been playing with aim assist off and we're on console. Hasn't been too bad. Been able to target the weak points and all of that. Now going forward, we may give aim assist a try again and see how it goes. We also have some director comments. The dev team is aware of the feedback regarding aim assist and has improved the feature to further enhance the console player experience. Since console is most of the player base. Now, previously, the aim assist feature made delicate control difficult as the aim automatically turns towards a nearby monster or focuses on the enemy's torso when you want to attack their weak point. With this improvement, the player with controllers now have more control over their aiming, while new players are giving appropriate assistance. Ooh, this is a huge one, guys. Added page 13 for the Season 1 Battle Pass. Crystallization Catalyst and Energy Activators have been added as rewards. Holy huge. Director's comments to meet the community's expectations for further improving the value of the Battle Pass rewards. We temporarily added page 13 for the Season 1 Battle Pass while providing Crystallization Catalysts and Energy Activators as the rewards. Even if you've already reached Season Level 96, you can still receive the additional rewards on page 13. Dev team is working hard to incorporate feedback from the community, further improve the game and provide more value to players. Based on the feedback we received during the preseason, we have improved the Season 1 Battle Pass to make it easier to achieve weekly and seasonal mission. Awesome. Appreciate continued interest in Season 1 Battle Pass along with the Battle Supply Shop where you can receive free rewards. Also have some ultimate weapon changes as well. Improve the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon wave of light scout rifle. Increase the recoil of solar halo while increasing the firearm critical hit rate. Increase the duration of the effect depending on the enhancement level. Hitting enemies while Solar Halo is active now creates dust, inflicting Lunar Halo to enemies within the range. You do get a firearm attack increase as well on hitting enemies inflicted with Lunar Halo. Improve the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon, Kingsguard Lance. Funny, on stream the other day we were just talking about this. We have all these Kingsguard Lance things. Is the weapon even good? And here we are getting some reworks to it. Now increase the base fire rate of King's Guard Lance while decreasing the base time it takes to charge. That sounds huge. You can now place up to three Guardian Lances and the Lances automatically attack enemies within the damage range when placed. Based on that, I wonder if that'll be good with um, Jaber and then stack that up with the turrets or something. That would have to be tested. Now the damage interval of the Guardian's Lance is now affected by the fire rate of King's Guard's Lance damage interval. Now you're gonna stack some heavy fire rate on this thing to make those do even more. And they've also increased the duration of the Guardian Lance depending on the enhancement level. Increased duration increase upon hit and damage range of the Guardian Lance. The maximum possible increase in range being limited. They've improved the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon executioner shotgun. Increase the base hip fire accuracy and aim shot accuracy of the executor. When the exaltation effect is active, failing to hit all fired bullets will no longer decrease the amount of stacks. Increase the maximum stacks of the executor's exaltion effect and firing the gun at maximum stacks will no longer disable the ability. They've increased accuracy and firearm critical hit rate based on the adjusted maximum stacks of the Exaltation effect and firearm critical hit damage of fire rate also increased now. Wow. And people have been using this one with Haley, guys, for her unique sniper. So now this, this just got a whole lot better. <laughs> and now the Exaltation effect at maximum stack now increased weak point damage instead of firearm attack. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Could this be a nerf? Weak, more weak point damage instead of firearm attack. Yeah, that could be a slight nerf. But the firearm attack is just flat attack anywhere here. Weak point, you gotta be hitting a weak point. Now, firearm attacks no longer increase when hitting enemies with electrocution. Yeah, a little slight nerf in here regarding that. I always say this, guys. If you're building into crits or something, just flat crit. So you just need to hit a spot. It doesn't matter. If it crits, it crits for more damage. Your base firearm attack is just more damage anywhere. Weak points, you need to be hitting the weak points. 
Now improve the base performance and unique ability ultimate weapon peacemaker hand cannon. This is huge. This one has been laughed at. <laughs> uh, Sigur reload for peace effects now also granted when using a fusion skill. Nice. The skill costs a single reload for peace effect now decreases depending on the enhancement level. We'll also increase the non-attribute skill power per stack of the single reload for peace effect. We got some Excava work. Improve the base performance and unique ability of the ultimate weapon Excava. Increase the maximum stacks of voltage charge depending on the enhancement level in order to grant the energy grenade effect more quickly. Wow, guys, this is huge. So at first when I was talking about it, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is what it would do when you enhance it. We never actually enhanced it. So now they're completely stating now with the enhancement levels that will be decreased. Know why that was not the case to begin with. Now increased additional damage for shooting while aiming when the energy grenade effect is active depending on the enhancement level. Huge again. Slightly increased projectile size of the energy grenade, a little more AOE effect. They've also increased the electric resistance decrease of the voltage accumulation effect depending on the enhancement level. So overall across the board, massive improvements to the Excava. Amazing. I'm thinking something like this, but will it be, or will these changes be significant enough to, let's say if you take that fire rate up a decent amount, I don't know the top of my head, the fire rate on it, but it's not going to be a high, high fire rate like Python or something to use on Glay. Could it be decent on using Glay? I think it may shine the most though on maybe a supply moisture valve, just for the extra crit. We'll all have to see it. Both did some UI improvements as well. Both exclude junk filter. We're just going over this the other day as well. <laughs> the filter all is junk function has been retooled to bulk exclude junk filter. Now it functions by specifying conditions for which ones to not designate as junk. Option filter now allows you to choose where the items are excluded if they meet only one specified condition or more than two. With this change, the current settings for filter all is junk will be reset. So please make sure to check your exclude settings before you dismantle items. Okay. Weapons ultimate are higher. Level one or higher must be set to exclude level one ultimate from junk. When set all level 100 rare to your weapon, will be selected as junk as a filter option has been changed. When select to exclude, make sure to check your exclude from junk settings before you dismantle items. Made improvements so that players can move between inventory and map more easily. I'll press the map button, M, inventory menu, setting customized consumable battle pass shop allows you to enter the map screen. It's the inventory in the map menu allows you to enter the inventory screen. Just a PC thing here, it seems. You can now bind hotkeys for the library, consumables, journal, social, battle pass, and shop menus and game options. Now immediately choose a selectable award before you begin hard infiltration operations. Uh, weapon listing, customized, now displays the status of skins for each weapon. The library, the item obtained from research are also displayed. In the acquisition info, you can also check tool tips for amorphous materials now. now. Change firing mode in the gameplay settings is now enabled by default. Essentially what that did was any burst of weapons or single weapons, just holding down your fire button would make them just continuously fire. That's available by default now. All some bug fixes, some UI stuff, and things of that nature. I will leave a link to the article down below as well. I'll say it and I say it again. Them being able to have the article published right on Twitter and you get all your info there is amazing. You really don't even have to go to their website or anything of that nature. So fixing it, you automatically switch to the tracked items tab on entering the research screen if there are complete or in progress research items. A fix an issue where the usage information button's not played for the tooltips of certain common skins. Fix an issue where entering a private battlefield as a party and leaving the party could turn the battlefield to public. Never experienced that. Now you're sent to Albion the moment you leave your party on a private field. Fix an issue where trying to equip a module when the socket type is changed could incorrectly display accumulated applied values. Once again, didn't find that issue. Descendants and ultimate weapons fix an issue where the effect remains if Ajax Bear is immediately destroyed at the time it is created. When Haley uses the Zenith skill, it's now affected by the movement speed of her current weapon rather than her unique weapon. This allows the RK Peacemaker to affect 
of the inversion reinforcement to be properly applied. For max HP, or an ally healed by using less than one the amount of recovery now calculated based on the target's max energy shield. Fixed an issue where King's Guard Lance blocked enemy projectiles. Fixed an issue where King's Guard Lance blocked enemy projectiles. <laughs> Maybe that's just how the weapon should have been from the start. <laughs> Uh, they did do some hefty changes to it. I'm gonna have to get it crafted and see. Three miscellaneous. Fix an issue where the Collect Ironheart Particles quest was not being completely despite being carried out. That hot fix patch to world be automatically applied upon relogging. Excluded. They stroke a line through there. The issue will be fixed on hotfix 1.13. Okay. Issue an invasion, Legion of Neutrality mission were dying during the battle. If the name monster could cause certain UI to not properly show up. Didn't experience that either, and we've died quite a bit in them invasion missions. <laughs> I fixed an issue in the Agata Desert, the Asylum Normal Infiltration Operation. We're dying during the battle against the named monster could cause the door to not open. Once again, didn't experience that. And that is Hot Fix 1.1.2. Let me you know your thoughts down below. Pretty much main summary, a huge overhaul to some unique weapons that were definitely long overdue. Especially this Excava and the... The fact that they got on this Excava quick is amazing. So that is amazing. Now, uh, let's scroll back up here a little bit. Another thing I'm really enjoying, added page 13. So now we can get some crystallization catalysts, as well as energy activators as the rewards from the battle pass. So hopefully going forward, this is now a standard thing in the battle pass. Um, let's see what else. We also did some changes to missions. They've nerfed Dead Bride. Remember last week they nerfed Pyro. They've also nerfed Hanged Man for whatever reason. You have to kind of ease the rest of the player base into the endgame content a little more. But I think overall that will kind of ruin it because now their builds won't be as up to par as they would have been before to kind of meet that threshold. But once again here they, they kind of went in a little more detail here compared to what they did with Pyro. Um, hold on, I'm doing a quick look through here. They just say lowered the difficulty. Um, it's only decreased to part HP the amplifier. So I don't think there's an HP decrease to the dead bride. It's just a decrease to the part HP. They did teleport changes. They did nerf the snowstorm, uh, reduce the range and the damage. But overall, shouldn't be no HP or defense change to dead bride, more just mechanically as well as Hanged Man, more mechanical things. A little lack of HP on certain components, so still more mechanical things. But not the overall like boss defenses or HP like they did with Pyro. So that's interesting as well. But that's all we have for you today. I also have this one open here. New events are live! You get to complete some daily tasks and earn rewards, plus enjoy 50% weapon proficiency boost in those infiltration operations to make those farming much much easier also daily challenges are back again to get that extra descendant xp we're also getting 20 fine adjustment control axes you have a hundred thousand kuiper shards as well as another hundred thousand two hundred thousand kuiper shards daily pretty nice we have the dates here also put them on screen as well so do get to farming now's the time to do so